Oh, oh God, it makes me excited. I'm gonna. It? I'm trying to link to my whole <laughs> idea. So if anyone steals it now, mate, I'm fucked. But that's fucked. we're gonna do it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right then, team. Welcome back. Oh no, I'm not that. I'm not hot enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that weird temperature. Where I can't tell whether can't I'm decide. too warm. Can't it? Right, that might stay in. But anyway, <laughs> all right, team. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Scratch Record Podcast. We've got a fantastic guest today. He's recently released his new EP. He's poetic, soulful. Raw lyrics come through so brilliantly. He's been nominated for the Rising Star Award in Birmingham Music Awards and has also played the BBC Introducing Stage. Welcome to the channel, The New Consistent. How are you, mate? Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, boys. How are you doing? Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, same <laughs> old boy. This is episode fucking 30 something, and every single time it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> getting, uh, it's getting, getting like worse effect. and worse. Yeah. <laughs> Just slowly a little bit more monotone as it goes on. <laughs> yeah, man. It's how it is. It's how it is. But yeah, we're all right. It's been, it's been a long time coming, I think. We were just saying when you jumped in, like, we've been sort of chatting for like probably fucking best part of a year now about it's, everything yeah this, i think it's like near from the because you guys have got to be going nearly a year now is it uh it yeah like march May. march definitely wasn't um, <laughs> <laughs> it was may coming we actually up to started year, up to yeah. Year. yeah but yeah i feel like we've been we've been chatting sort of since near the start of that so it's yeah it's it's been yeah. a long time coming it's good man it's good to be chatting yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, it's been it's been too long, and I think now that you've had this new EP that's come out, I feel like mm-hmm. it's the perfect sort of time to kind of be able to talk to you and get you out there to the people that kind of should be listening to it if they haven't heard it already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. Well, talk us through that EP then. So, how has it been for you doing this recording process? Because it's quite a fairly new system for you, isn't it? Recording music and that. Yeah, it's. That EP kind of it came together through recording like a loads of different times because I do it sort of mostly in my room, mm. um, and I've recorded most of it before the whole like pandemic or anything, um, and so I was sort of gearing up to release it at the start of 2020, um, and I was sort of aiming to get it out in like May time, and then obviously March hit, and it was like I, I just sort of got the like got them all mixed, got them all mastered, and was like ready to go, and then obviously and then yeah the pandemic hit, and so I was like. I wanted to delay it because um, it didn't seem right to be dropping it at the very start. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of been a bit of a long time coming, really. Um, the recording process, or like I say, happened at various points. So it was sort of like pieces of the puzzle all coming together um, over quite a long period of time. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And I think you can see that, that a lot of work went into it and sort of the growth from that first EP yeah. into the second one. You could sort of see that like... Um, the, all the ideas and the style and everything was there in that first one, but that second one just really had that extra layer of like the choruses were nailed down and they were yeah, just that, yeah, yeah. that little bit more polished. So is that something you were grateful to have the time to do? Yeah, I, I kind of said after the first EP, I wanted to proper properly hone my hone my craft. Um, and like looking back now, that first EP sort of seems more like demos mm. from what I'm doing now. Um, so yeah, it was good, and it was kind of not. Lo- that first lockdown was actually quite nice to have the time to sort of get everything prepped and ready for how I wanted it to be. Mm. Um, so yeah, no, it was good. It's it's been a, it's been quite a good one. Yeah, good. definitely. And I've- so your music is actually incredibly unique. We were talking about this earlier on how we'd how we'd actually describe it if we were going to try and yeah. pigeonhole you to a genre. We were like, I don't know. I, I, the way that I'd probably put it is alternative poetry was what we decided on before you jumped yeah to but let, could you give us like a almost like a description on how you see your music how you would explain it to someone that's never heard it before yeah it's uh, this is like the world's hardest question for me and it, it's got a little bit easier as like time has gone on and my sounds got more defined but like i think especially from this the second ep it's definitely sort of leaning towards more alternative poetry alternative hip-hop that kind of thing mm. um but then it's got influences of like indie 
blues, jazz, soul. So it's all that. It's a bit of a sort of impossible co- to do cocktail. It, it? Yeah, it's a yeah. bit of a cocktail of that, really. Um, I think the music I'm making now for like the next project is more sort of alternative hip hop, uh, neo sort of soul kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's kind of that's the sort of direction it's going in, really. Mm. I mean, I'm interested in that in that process then. So do you like is do you feel like the sort of poetry and like lyricism comes first for you? It's sort of like writing a poem and then later you can find the rhythm over the beats and form the song, or is it the opposite way around? Yeah, no, nah, I'm always kind of I'm always writing lyrics like as and when they come to me and just sort of writing them in my phone. Mm. Um and so then when I when I actually sit down to write, yeah, it is sort of about then getting putting them to the beat and making sure they're all in time and sort of cutting words out here and there so it has the flow properly um and that that's kind of how i do it i, I write quite sparsely really i don't i'm not one of those that can go into the studio every day and like sit and write a song mm. um it, it sort of a lot of songs get pieced together over a long time it's yeah. quite annoying really because i <laughs> I like to be one of those people that can go for, like, to the studio for like a week, write an album and then be done with it. But yeah, yeah, I'm not have, one of those. Have you found it a little bit harder with lockdown? Because I think a lot, like as the EP like says, it's stories from the mm. 01905. It's like a lot of experiences, things that you've actually yeah. been through mm. and witnessed. So have you found like with life coming to a bit of a halt, has that like hindered your sort of creative processes at all? It hasn't. I think if anything, it's kind of enhanced it because I've actually had to, I've had the time to sit and write, but usually I'm a bit sort of here, there, and everywhere. But the stuff I'm writing about is maybe a little bit more downbeat, mm, um, yeah. which is a bit. Like, I'm trying to kind of avoid that. I've, like a lot of my early stuff was kind of that melancholy vibe, but I'm trying to sort of bring it, you know, bring it a bit more sort of different emotions into play. But that uh, that's that's the only kind of struggle I found really. Um, with the whole lockdown thing is trying to write about something other than being frustrated and sad <laughs> yeah. and angry. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 for sure. Um, yeah. But yeah, the little, the little sort of snippets of, of fun and life from 2020, I made sure I wrote about them to try mm. and bring in a, some of those other emotions. Mm. Yeah. Is it giving you time to reflect over kind of like, obviously it's for me, a lot of shit happened in the space of a year before the lockdown. Mm-hmm. As soon as lockdowns come, I'm able to kind of, process life a little bit yeah. i've kind of like accepted what's been going on and got mm-hmm. into a position if you found that's kind of has that kind of happened to you and if so is it like helped your writing process yeah definitely like the first lockdown especially i was up until like 4 a.m every night like mm-hmm. watching stuff or writing something and sort of like you say having that time to reflect on like say the last one year or three years or five or however many has been it's been tough, like it's definitely been the hardest because I don't know about you, but like if something something's happened, so like you've had a bad sort of time or whatever, in normal life, you've usually got stuff to t- take your mind off it a lot more. Yeah. yeah. And so obviously having that having that time where you have to sit and think about it because there's nothing else to do is good because it long term it makes you, you know, it it make it's better. But short term it is it's difficult, but that's where the writing comes into play. Like, look, mm-hmm. I've got, I, I can, I can use my writing as, like, as, as the outlet, um, which you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for. Because without that, I probably would just be sat in bed all day watching Netflix, doing, doing yeah. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah, and it has yeah. been like that uh, quite, quite a bit still. But yeah, yeah, you find yourself slipping into the rut, don't you? Like, yeah, oh, man. I find myself still, I still, this lockdown, I still find myself up till like three o'clock in the morning, yeah, just yeah, fucking yeah. watching stupid shit on YouTube. YouTube holes and that. Hey, <laughs> fuck me. And now then they had to fucking drop TikTok and get that big as well, didn't they? I know. <laughs> That's a fucking rabbit hole of us. Literally, you could literally lose three hours like that oh, on TikTok. Oh, especially because it's the, the algorithm so tuned to your, the shit you <laughs> like, too. So I'm scrolling through and it's like, you know, I've got Call of Duty content, I've got some dark humour, yeah, I've yeah, got yeah. bit of this, bit of that, and I'm like, hey, yep. Yeah, I, don't know, I don't know how they do it. No, it's, it's baffles it's me. Dodgy, because, it's dodgy. Mate, it, it's it, dodgy. Is, it is. Do you know what? That's exactly what it is. It's dodgy as fuck because they don't even, people don't even use hashtags. Like they're no. all like, they're just like hashtag like FYP and that's it. Mm-hmm. But it's exactly the shit I want to see. 
But it's, how yeah. do they know? It's weird as fuck. But it is wild. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of good, but it's kind of bad again. Yeah. Yeah. It's I want. I want just quickly. I want to touch on the. Have you seen the new thing with Snapchat and their new spotlight thing? No. What is it? Right. So they've done a TikTok. Like uh, they've made their. You know I'm how like to keep Insta- up with it. Like yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But you know how Instagram did reels and all that shit. They've put. They've added an extra thing into Snapchat, and I wasn't very clued up on it. I know this is very relevant to the interview, but it's very. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, welcome to the Scott I was, <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I was listening to another podcast last night, and they were saying that every day Snapchat have been giving out a million dollars to people that are getting the most views. What? So what? people have been earning. There's a there's someone who came from TikTok, moved on to Snapchat, and was uploading about a hundred videos a day. Yeah. And last month he took home two point seven million. <sighs> That's wild. just fucking, mate. That's, that's just wild. them trying to steal like TikToks. Yeah. How absurd! <sighs> I'm surprised Snapchat still got the money to do that. I can't I know, lie. I, I know. Like, I know. That's, that's just wild. What is it on? Like the like the explore page of Snapchat. Then so like along the bottom, you've got like your the maps, messages, the middle mm. button, yeah, 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 stories, and explore, and then there's a button to the right that's your spotlight. Fucking and that's what they've okay. That's what they've, that's, what they've it. that's what they've called it, and it's fucking wank. It I'm is not, uh, horrendous. Just, I don't know why they try it. Like Instagram just about got away with the whole reels thing. Mm. I think that's still a bit dodgy, but Snapchat trying it is just like yeah. oh, you like give, come on, get, get, get in up. the bin, mate. Yeah. And it, I I saw it and I messaged my girlfriend because my girlfriend does TikTok and all that bollocks, and I was yeah. like Lily. You need to get your ass oh, off the Snapchat. Yeah, <laughs> get that mill, Lily. Yeah. Go on, let's get, let's get on there. <laughs> let's that get on there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absurd. Well, absurd. I, I mean, in danger of, of having my job of trying to pull it back to a relevant conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Just quickly, I might quit music. And after this, you got yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to start taking my kit off and dancing on Snapchat. <laughs> yeah. I think that's where, that's yeah, where the mate, money's that's at. That's a place to be, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um. I want to pull it back and sort of go back to the start with you. Okay. And sort of go back to when you first really got into music, first mm-hmm. realised that you sort of had this like creative brain. Mm-hmm. How did it start for you? Like, was it poetry? What sort of age were you? Like, what was going on? Yeah, so I was like 14, really, and when I first got into music. And like, my first band was obviously Oasis. Like, that was the first fucking... Classic. I, I was like obsessed. So I was like 14. Mm-hmm. I used to get detention every day because I thought I was like Liam Gallagher in school. <laughs> it's bad. It's yeah. bad. Looking back, like, it's a bad time. Um, so yeah, that sort of, and then obviously you discover every other band um, from there and it kind of spirals. So that was like, that was me from like 14 to 17 was just mm. obsessive with, with music and like strictly indie as well. I was very like, like stubborn about the music I listen to. I think mm. as like when you're that age, you think, you know, I want to listen to this. This is who I am and all that kind of mm. stuff. Yeah. Um, so that was me. And I was just like playing guitar, really shit guitar in my room uh, and making like demos on my phone and stuff for, for ages, not really taking it seriously or anything. Um, but then like, as I, as I got to like 18, my sort of tastes widened um, and I got into more, sort of hip hop and and but hip hop and indie and all that kind of stuff that the sort of the artists that blur the lines um mm. and from there i kind of started then realizing i had you know like the garage band app on your phone mm. that's just there when you get the phone i realized i had that and i was like oh this is quite cool and then started making demos just playing like my guitar um straight through to the phone mic really really shit quality stuff uh, and then I heard there's this there's this guy called Laurel Karna, um, who I listen to, and like I've been trying to I've been trying to be this singer since I was fourteen that was just never gonna happen or anything. Mm. And then I listened to like Laurel Karna and people like that, and was like I could do that because it doesn't involve me showing how shit my singing voice is. Um, and so it kind of it kind of went from there, and it kind of happened quite quickly. Then I started putting songs together, and like. The song Three Years was the first one I ever wrote that was like a proper song. Mm-hmm. Um, and like the, the first demo, I literally recorded it. And I recorded the, vo- the vocals onto my phone and the guitar and all that and sort of just whacked it on, on SoundCloud. Um, and that's kind of the evolution of it, really. That's how it all started. And that, that demo's still on my SoundCloud as well. It's like 
the worst ever vocal take, but it's the first. <laughs> it's the first one, so I like to keep it out there. Keep it there. Yeah, yeah, keep yeah. It yeah. There. Definitely. But yeah, that's how it kind of. Uh, long story short, that's how it kind of evolved. Really. Mm. Yeah. Was Loyal Karner always is so like on your key influences because mm-hmm. your story sounds. I'm I'm quite I'm quite a big fan of the uh, hip hop world too. Like I'm mm-hmm. I love hip hop. Yeah. And your story kind of sounds very similar to Tyler the Creators. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're probably like when he released Bastard, like at the mm-hmm. start of his whole thing and his mixtapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was very much like, I am not a singer. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I literally make my tracks on Garage Band. Uh-huh. I enjoy pissing around with it. I'm not a singer. But yeah, now yeah. he's on that progression and he's Igor's he's, recently come out and he's yeah, now yeah. singing. It's, Is, yeah. I think it's, that's something it's that can you see yourself doing something like that and slowly moving? Because realizing that singing not isn't necessarily for angelic vocals only. Like, but that's it. Yeah, I kind of, I've kind of tried it here and there on certain songs, and I'd like to be able to do it. Like, I, I, I'm not like the worst singer in the world. Like, but mm. it's not, it's not like you say, typical singing voice that you mm. that you associate with. You know. So I think definitely, I think as I sort of get more into my music, I'd like to be able to try. I like to be able to give myself the platform to be able to try stuff like that, like yeah. like Tyler's, but like Tyler can do whatever the fuck he wants now because he's you know yeah. he's built that fan base exactly yeah. So that I would like to be able to do that at some point. I think I don't know. We'll see. Maybe mm. with like new projects, I might lockdown might get me thinking. I might try it. <laughs> get you singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> YouTube singing lessons on the go. Yeah, got to be done, mate. I tell you. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Mm. Have you, so you've always been like a solo artist from the start mm-hmm. or have you ever, like, have you ever considered sort of being in a more, like like a band, but more maybe like a collaborative music project? Yeah, definitely. I think I'm kind of, I kind of am, I guess at the minute, a collaborative thing because a lot of my, because at the minute I'm not singing my own choruses as much. I am getting like my friends involved. Mm-hmm. I sort of, sort of like in a collective kind of way. Um, yeah. And I'd like, in terms of being a band, I think the the end goal with live performances is having a live band mm. because I think like at the minute, well not at the minute, but you know before before COVID, it was just me and my and my mate on the decks running the sort of set through that. Mm. Um, but I think having a live band is just a completely different thing altogether. Um, yeah, you know, people playing live instruments is it can't be beaten. <laughs> so that's that's definitely the aim there. Um, and like my music going forward from here is involving more sort of in standard instruments like the bass and the guitar and the drums and shit like that so it could be it could be easily done yeah definitely. yeah definitely because i was listening through um the demos you put up was it yesterday you put them up yeah 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 yeah, um, yeah and they're really good to be fair i really enjoyed listening through them. nice one Thank and you. um the touch of a woman demo yeah that's sort of like over almost like an acoustic guitar on that demo isn't it and yeah, i quite that... liked how that it, it moved it towards more like indie yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, that, I, I've been go on, go on. No, I was just like going to say, is that something you've looked at, like putting it more that way? Yeah. Well, that I, I, that was like a riff I had from when I was like seventeen. It was one of the only decent ones that kind of survived that period. <laughs> and like, yeah, yeah, I think I think definitely. I think I've always tried to include the guitar because that was my first instrument. Um, and I think. Guitar. When you say like the, the guitar instrument, people associate it with like a, with like one or two genres, but like it can be used in such a wide variety of, of genres. Oh, yeah. Um, and so yeah, I, I think I was I was very close to just putting out that song as just me and the guitar, mm. and like my girlfriend like prefers that version as well. Um, but yeah, I think I got a bit too a bit too nervous with that. I was it was too raw for me. I had to sort of yeah, I had to, I had to um, get some other stuff on it. But yeah, no, definitely. I think I've been playing the guitar actually a lot more the last two weeks because mm. I um I'd neglected it for a while and was like, I need to I need to I've forgotten everything I knew, so I need to try, <laughs> I need to try and get back on that. Definitely. Yeah. No, see, I just thought it was interesting when I heard it, and I was like, oh, this is like yeah, yeah, it shows yeah. a bit of that versatility that it could be. Like you're only a few steps away, and you're like a indie band, and then yeah, you're yeah, yeah, only literally. a few steps away from being like a hip hop artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just sort of trying to find that perfect blend. I think mm. always. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting for sure. I like that for sure. I think that's. I think that is sick. You do you have 
any influences outside of music because of your music being so unique i thought mm-hmm. there for me like kind of looking in i kind of felt that there must be something else that's heavily influenced your direction uh, so re- i've never been asked that you know and that's quite a good question I don't, oh, I don't know. <laughs> that, that's like probably one of the best questions I've been asked because that's kind of stumbled me a little bit. I need to think. Ah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, actually. I think there's like sort of maybe actors and poets, which is kind of borderline onto the music, but like mm. there's this guy from Birmingham called Benjamin Zephaniah. Yeah. Who, um, a, a lot of his books, I've, I got literally, I got one of his books my birthday and then read that and then lit- and then after christmas i ordered like all of his other books to read for this lockdown mm. um so a lot of yeah a lot of his stuff i'm quite influenced by um but i think a lot, a lot of them would just come from people around me like my dad i sort i like to chat with like people around me and and sort of just take inspiration from what they're saying yeah my dad my mates my, my, my girlfriend people like that um and that's kind of why the whole stories thing came from, because it's like, it's that inspiration from just people around me and people in my life. Mm. Um, but yeah, I need to, I need a longer time to think about that, <laughs> that that's no people way. outside of music, because there is, there is lots of people, but I guess it's more subconscious when it's sort of, when you're not directly mm. taking, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 taking bits. That's, yeah. So you mentioned briefly your dad there. Is he someone who's been a big influence on you? Because I know obviously like Rude Boys is sort of about your relationship, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. And I always found like the lyrics in that song quite fascinating because it's like sort of shows a, like a strong relationship, but like quite a unique one as well. So is that like, has he been a big influence? Yeah, I think because I only, I only started living with him like two, three years ago, three years this year. So I've been because I grew up with my mum, so then starting to live with him and sort of see him on a daily basis, mm. I've I've grown to know so much more about the person he is, and then that obviously like reflects on who I am and stuff. So that was kind of what that was about was seeing how alike we are and um and yeah, sort of how it how it how we sort of affect each other and how we sort of talk and stuff like. I think yeah. It was. It's been. It's been quite good having that because obviously, like I say, I grew up with my mum, and so I knew mm. all about her. I knew I could see myself in her, and then yeah, I could I could start to see myself in my dad, and then it sort of spiraled from there, really. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's that's interesting. So was he not around in in your younger years, if you like? Is that something that's happened more recently? Yeah, but he like they split up when I was like two, so I don't really right. remember that. And then like I'd seen him. I've seen him like sort of regularly bet- between between then and moving in with him um mm. but it wasn't like you know when you see someone on a daily basis you, and you get it's to a bit know different a lot. yeah it's different yeah um so yeah it's been good it's been good it's been quite enlightening actually mm. that's yeah. good to hear interesting. yeah man that is it that is interesting did you go to university or anything were you were you always been have you always been at home you no know, i was i was gonna go to university i was gonna go to manchester university um to do graphic design but Ooh, interesting. at that sort of time, the music started happening. And then I was like, fuck that. I want to just try and do this and tackle yeah. it sort of head on. Yeah. Um, but I think you can go to uni at any age, isn't it? So I yeah, think I like if, if it gets, if I'm get to like 25 and I'm like still living with my dad, like not really doing anything and I might like go to uni, isn't it? But, but yeah, just fuck off to Manchester and be like, yeah. Yeah. I should be like, it's <laughs> fun. Like, yeah. Yeah. But, um, sure. Yeah. And no, that wasn't, it wasn't the right time in the end. Um, yeah, yeah, that's perfectly fair enough. Yeah. We know a lot of people that we know that have started doing music and that their their kind of decision was to kind of let's focus on this now while we've got the time and stuff on our hands, and then yeah. we'll kind of discuss university at a later date and that. Yeah, definitely. And I think I think you like you get pressured into thinking like you leave college or whatever, you should probably go to uni, isn't it? Oh, like, I don't know. Did what? Did you boy? Did you always go to uni? Bro, or not? Yeah, I did. I studied philosophy. Really? Yeah, that's heavy. Look- it's yeah. fucking heavy. Tell me about it. <laughs> Multiple mental breakdowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> glad it's over with. Yeah, to yeah. Be it is. It is. It's heavy. Like, if, and I think if if 
if it's something you definitely want to do, then you should do it. But I didn't, I didn't personally want to, mm. I wasn't hundred percent. So I didn't, yeah, I didn't go. Yeah. I wish I had the same mentality with that for sure. Cause it's such a strange experience when you're, I've got about a year and a half through and I'm like, I'm halfway through now. I might as well finish it, even though I fucking hated the course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I've got, to, I've got to come out with something of this. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I can't just drop it. I should have done something completely different, more creative, but it's, it's, it's hard. It's, yeah. I sort of agree. I think people don't, um, you don't get like taught enough about what you should do. Like I You're too of, young. You're too young to go to you are, Yeah. Like I did, I did psychology and it was all yeah. right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Like relatively interesting, but I'm never going to actually go into it, and I didn't particularly enjoy it. But I loved uni. I went to Manchester. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, was, did you? Yeah. And oh, it was, nice. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. loved it. Like loved every. Good loved city. Manchester. It's a Definitely. City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loved all that part of it. So I'd never be like, I wish I didn't go or anything, because going was the best thing uh-huh. about it. But in terms of like, it, it was unnecessary to think I had to go and get a good. Degree mm. and I think yeah, I think you can look at you in two ways. Like if you're a doctor or a teacher, you obviously go. And that, you know, you know the career path. But yeah. I think what you boys have done is good because, like, it's just the experience of life, isn't it? And, like, you're mm. learning stuff, um, but you're also having that completely different switch up from, like, living at home. Like, I don't know if you, I don't know, like, some people have lived in their hometown all their life and they go to uni and it's like, yeah. Yeah, mate, um, it's mind-blowing. Yeah, and it's Mind good. Blowing. Like, it's good. It's good to have that. And I think, in a way, it is good that you go at 18 because... You're still young. There's not too much pressure. You can just go and fucking party for three years, isn't it? Mm. And learn a bit while you're there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, essentially, I literally went, realised I wanted to be on radio and podcasts yeah. and, that, and then make videos and all that shit. Kind yeah. of did my degree and got pissed up and when <laughs> yeah, finished, yeah, yeah. I did what I yeah. wanted to do. So, yeah. so it's, it's calm, isn't it? Yeah, it's calm. And like, part of me does think maybe I could have done that, but I don't know. I probably wouldn't have... I would have just lost focus on what I was doing. So, yeah. oh god, yeah, god, yeah. 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 So, how, minute. so, are you quite sort of passionate? Because it's Worcester, isn't it? You're from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you're quite passionate about that, as like where you're from. So, obviously, like named like the second EP after it, and a yeah. lot. Like, I watch your documentaries about um, like just wandering around and going back to mm-hmm. it, and sort of mm-hmm. taking a lot from it. So, has that been quite a big influence on you? Yeah, definitely. Like, because I moved around quite a lot when I was younger um, but Worcester was like the place where I lived the longest I was like from like 11 to 18 so that was there obviously like key years for when you were growing mm. up um, so which is why I think it's sort of um, been, been such a big influence but like I think I was always when I, whenever I look at artists that I like their sort of first projects are always so raw and so then because they're, they're taking influence from what's directly around them mm, yeah so that's what i wanted to do is just sort of sort of say this is where i'm coming from this is what i'm about um and i think if if you're being that honest and original if you're being that honest then you're always original mm, yeah um, i don't i'm not like people who like pretend you know pretend there's something else or someone else is like it's good creatively because it's you know it's that's what they're on Again, with, with some of my favourite artists, when they've released a project that I really like, you want to then, you listen to the project, you love it, it's cool. You want to then buy the vinyl, look at the artwork, you want to mm-hmm. see like the interviews on YouTube or like sh- shit like that. So like, can I swear? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mate, it's it's, yeah, it's um, actively encouraged, mate. Yeah, <laughs> fucking sick. Okay, can't. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like, I think I wanted to just create the world around the music as much, and make it as big as I can. Yeah, what the sort of documentary and the music videos are about, um, and like the documentary was 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 sort of creatively all me, but uh, like the turn off the screens video, I got my friend um, Jackie P involved, and like I let sort of him sort of go creatively with that. Yeah, um, but like when I work with people I trust, I know that their addition to the little world around the music is going to be calm because they know me, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, so, yeah. No, yeah, it's cool. It's good. I like I like just being as creative as I can and using all these different outlets and stuff. Mm. Yeah, for sure. You've re- you have made that creative world with documentary, videos, clothing. I love the addition for, of a zine. I enjoyed yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. I yeah, thought that nice was one, fucking man. brilliant. I thought that was nice such one. a good idea. Thank and- you. What else are you going to add to your repertoire moving forward? Because there's so many other avenues you, you could take this. Yeah, well, 
I was on a, I was on Instagram like last week and I was asking people what they wanted for merch. Mm. Uh, and someone said a fucking cookbook as a joke. <laughs> I saw this. Oh, it was, it was making God. me laugh. It yeah, was so honestly though, like I, I do, I do chefing is like my part time job, isn't it? And my dad's a chef, so like cooking, cooking is quite um, relevant in my life. And so yeah, I'm gonna for the thirty p, I'm gonna do a cookbook. And like, oh, fucking brilliant! Yeah, make, isn't that such a good idea? Make, make a song, make a recipe for each song on the EP. Um, and like, hang on, let me show you. There's this like cookbook I've got. <laughs> And it's like mob kitchen, and like with each recipe, they've got like a <laughs> Spotify code. Oh. Obviously scan in, yeah. Oh um, god, it makes me excited. I'm gonna. It? I've kind of leaked my whole <laughs> idea, so if anyone steals it now, mate, I'm fucked. But that's <laughs> we're gonna do it. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. That's oh, sick. It's such a good idea. Yeah, that's my. I'm ex- excited as for that for the actual EP itself. Yeah. Gotcha. It's something good to to work on, and yeah. Yeah, because people were like um, putting in like uh, like words for it, and I, I you did put up, one, didn't you? Yeah. I did come <laughs> yeah, up with the the stew consistent. I like that. I did like that. I like no. that. that was good. <laughs> Might have credit you in the book for that. Do one. you know what I mean? Like a little uh, PSRP would be sound, but uh, yeah, there was there was loads of people putting in there, making me laugh. Yeah, no, it it's really... cool. It kind of started out as a joke, and then I was sat in bed and it was like, <laughs> oh shit, this is actually quite a good idea. Yeah, and it so, yeah, it reminded nice. me of you Al, a lot because that's the sort of thing where like someone would say it as a joke, and you'd be like. Oh my god! Yeah. Hold on, <laughs> and on. then you'd be up till like six a.m. and then I'd, I'd literally go to sleep, having made a joke, and wake up the next morning with like nineteen messages being like, "Okay, so I've done this. I've ordered that. I've got in contact with this person." <laughs> it's planned. Oh, it's it's, 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 it was it's a planned. Joke. It's yeah, booked yeah, in. Yeah. With, it's literally what had happened. We were we weren't going to do t-shirts yet until yeah. Like so, we did one for episode twenty, and we wanted to make merchandise of, of some description at some point, but we yeah, weren't going to yeah. do it just yet. Definitely. And Joe's auntie put a comment on one of our Instagram posts being like, when's the merch coming? I think I and saw I like, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, fuck, I've not thought about this for this oh, for a shit. while. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's design something. So I sat until four in the morning, designed the whole thing. Did you do the I, little cigarette packet thing? So I, didn't, I, I did the design for the cigarette packet and the cassette on the back, yeah. but I sent it off to a graphic designer to get it made that we know. Yeah. So one of our friends like made it look less shit, but for like the whole like <laughs> yeah. the idea was kind of all something that I came up with at stupid o'clock in the morning. Mate, like. They're the best ones, but especially when they happen so fast as well. That you know that like, you're onto something. Bro, it was I as well. It. it was literally then the next morning I went round yours and you you like literally sketched it down like this is what I want, and then we sent it over and then like uh, within like a couple of weeks, design's done organize a t-shirt thing and it was like yeah, yeah but the thing yeah. is half that stuff when you just try and do it is is so much easier than you think mm-hmm. like and yeah, i think man. like that's what we keep saying about things when you know elliot has a lot of ideas some will always be impossible <laughs> but some then you can start being like okay actually <laughs> this could work we put wheels in motion pretty quick it's not like you, yeah you got to keep it you rolling shit and you can you can get it done but yeah. some things i'm like yeah probably not Maybe yeah. in a few years, like the one yeah. that the, the one that I pulled up the other day, I went because uh, I, I went I went to him, I went, Joe, I've had an idea, and he, he every time I say that, he's always like, "Oh fuck's sake, what we got, <laughs> what are we working with?" And I was like, "Right, top of the pops, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you remember that program? <laughs> you remember that?" I was like, "Let's do our own version." I'm yeah, already yeah. I'm already looking at ordering a live stream, like a live stream mixer. And things like that. Let's 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 see if we can put it into motion. So, I've got I've got the audio mixer. I'm gonna get a visuals mixer for the cameras, and we can just get going. It'd be perfectly fine. And Joe was like, Elliot, not yet. <laughs> like, we didn't even know that Zoom had a record function. And yeah. the next day, he's like, we're gonna basically put on our own fucking festival from his garage. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay. I'm like, baby steps. We'll get there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But at the moment, let's just focus on like recording a conversation. And then, <laughs> then we'll... it's good though, man. It's good to be like that because like you, you are just always creative then. Yeah, uh, always just so. random shit. What's the weirdest thing you've come up with? Someone suggested, so you know our links are doing like the socks and the aftershave in like a, I don't know if you've seen it. It's quite new. Yeah. So I said, do like new consistent socks and aftershave in a little as, as a merch bundle, which Ooh, is quite weird. That's um, a good idea. It's a good idea. I was like, yeah, maybe it could just smell of like halloumi and pesto pasta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, like, so there's been some weird stuff like that. 
but I, when I, my most sort of weird and stupid ideas happen so late at night that I either write them down and then I, they can turn into something maybe a bit, a bit better, but most of them are just like, this is sick, I could do this, I could do this, and then like, I've either forgotten it half an hour later or I've just been like, no, that's stupid. Actually, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I like it. As you say, it is, it is good and like you, you'll land on some things that will hit. You're, yeah, your stumble on like, is great. Yeah. Mate, that you only need one that hits big time and it's yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. shit, do you know what I mean? So that's why like, it is, I just let Elliot go and then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. at some point he'll land on something that's going to be fucking unreal. But yeah, it's man. like, sometimes it is, it's interesting. It's an interesting balance, but do you find you have to sort of do that in your own head? Be like, yeah. And then have to compromise like, myself. That's yeah. possible. Yeah. That's not possible. <laughs> But yeah, always always write them down though, because like in like two years, you might go back to it and be like, "Oh, I could actually maybe do this now." Oh, mate, I've got uh, notebooks full of it. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, got yeah. stupid shit from app designs to full clothing seasons. Like I've designed whole seasons. <laughs> that is great. It's, it's the like, way to be, mate. It's the way. I to be. I love it. I love it. It's almost that weird, like you get into a headspace and just anything's possible in that headspace. Mm-hmm. In that headspace, and you're just like, right, if I could do fucking anything, yeah, 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 what would I want to make next? Yeah, definitely. And yeah. it's like, you can, you, a lot of stuff like you think is pretty stupid, but then if you look at the end goal and then work your way back, you can, mm. you can create the path to do it, anyway, I think. Yeah, so, that's it. Gotcha. Speaking of this sort of shit, when's, when's the vinyls coming? Mate, honestly, I had this, the, the sleeves come in the post today. Oh, the vinyl sick. was meant to come. To me yesterday and it hasn't so it's oh, sort of, you know. but end oh. of the month payday payday weekend is 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 that's the goal yeah. beautiful yeah, that's really, exciting yeah. stuff yeah, i think I'm your guessing. stuff will really suit it because like it gives you like as we've been saying you're so creative with your artwork and mm. all the extra bits like i feel yeah. like vinyl gives you the perfect step to like have yeah, another man. physical product to work on isn't it so it's, i was yeah i was struggling to find like the right because most people press at like 300 is like the minimum. Yeah. Mm. So I was like, I'm not going to sell 300. So I was struggling to find the uh, the right car. But yeah, no, it's it's all come together and it's going to be a, it's going to be cool. I want to try and keep one for myself, but I haven't really ordered that many. And mm. a lot of people have been saying, when's the final? When's the final? Like, oh shit, I should have maybe ordered a bit more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you'll know for next time though. Yeah. You'll know yeah, for next definitely. time for sure. But yeah, no, it'd be cool, man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That is exciting stuff. I also think your music will suit the depth of vinyl. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, think have, having the surround, like I feel like vinyl, you can really hear the layering of it all. Yeah, 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 definitely. I think I think there's certain music that just fits. And like, I'm trying to get to that sort of stage where it's like the perfect music for vinyl, but mm. yeah, it's good. It's cool. It should be, a, it should be good, man. Yeah, cool. definitely. So I've, I feel like you sort of know a lot of people and I was I revisited because I was on your SoundCloud, revisited those like remixes that you did um yeah, first yeah, lockdown. Yeah. And I want to speak about feet because that's an oh, yeah. interesting um sort of friendship that's come about. And we've had so a few conversations random. with them and that, but like how's that come about? And like are you good mates with them and stuff? Well, it was kind of really weird. Like they dropped the stems for their album. Um like every song on the album was like here you go guys you know get creative do whatever and I was saw it and I was like oh this could be quite good I've got fuck all else to do so I, I like I got the stems and then I, I messaged them I, I was like really really cheeky I messaged them because they were due to have like a tour in the September this was obviously like April time and I messaged them was like if I make a remix it's good enough can I support you on the on like the <laughs> Midlands there this tour and they were like yeah and I was like oh it's sick oh, that's- so that night I literally made I put it all together that night and then wrote the vocal, uh, like wrote the lyrics that night. And then I'd made up in that lockdown, I made up like a den of recording and I, I was using my phone. So I made, I, got, I sort of the next day I recorded the vocals and then like put it all together. My, my mix and master engineer was like, yeah, I'll mix and master it like straight up. We'll do it quickly. And then, and then, yeah, I just put it out and was like, here you go. I sent it to them and they were like, they were quite, and they were quite gassed with it and they really? and then they shared it and then they were like they tweeted I was like I popped to like Morrison's or something and then I was in the car and they tweeted um they like quote tweeted the tweet of, that I'd put it out and were like we should probably get this boy up to spit these bars at the Midland show or something and I was like shit fucking gas that's <laughs> yeah I was, I was gas um 
And then obviously fucking Corona carried on. Ruined it, man. Like they had to cancel the whole tour and they they don't bother with scheduling because you know there's no point. No um, point. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a bit peak. It's kind of fizzled down now because of, yeah. of the pandemic. But <clears throat> we've chatted like obviously since then a bit. Um, and hopefully maybe one day when we can uh, gig again. I'll... Yeah, definitely. I like that though. Like it's one of them you don't ask, you don't get, do you? Like yeah, just... literally. I was just like I was a right cheeky little prick about it. Then they're, they're like they're quite cheeky lads, aren't they? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, fair play. Like. He's, that's, what, he's, that's what you've got to do. We've tried it and been had some success and had some not success. Man, there's been a lot of failures. Like, yeah, it's, I mean? it's always lots of failures. But I'm fed up of the scene function on Instagram. <laughs> I, I don't like. I like the idea of not being seen and people have just like not seen us come up and yeah, they've yeah, ignored yeah, it in that up. respect. But when you got people that have definitely read it. And yeah, just yeah, completely yeah. ignored it. It actually hurts. Yeah, it's painful, man. It's painful. I'm like, we're there in front of you, but it's not gone any further. Like, you you like, took us in for a second. Why not just, yeah. you know... You now know we exist, but yeah. still, there we go. It will all come. But no, I it's do like... It's part of parcel. Yeah, mm. man. No, it was, uh, it was good. It was good. It was good. It kept me entertained for a, a couple of weeks in lockdown. It, yeah, it? definitely. Was it something yeah. that you enjoyed, like, um, doing, like, the remixes and stuff? It's a bit of it a was, experience, isn't it? Yeah, it was sick, like... Because obviously I went on to then do the, the whole tape mm. and I didn't and I didn't want to I didn't want to drop like I said I didn't want to drop this EP in the middle of that so I was like I want to still be doing music but I didn't want to be dropping my own stuff so like it was it was sick it made, was able to like give me the space to find my influences and find the music I want to make and really like I say home or craft um, and get and just get really creative and because it wasn't like my own project. There was no pressure to be able to like fit into my own sort of genre and, and mm. guide, guidelines and stuff. So it was, it was sick. To be fair, I have thought about doing something similar again this this lockdown, but hopefully, it won't be. Maybe the, the lights at the end of the tunnel won't be in it for as long. I don't know. Yeah. Fuck knows. Who fucking knows? <laughs> yeah, who knows? But who uh, knows? no, it's but, sick. And then it's, also it's cool. like um, Ladybird doing the one for yours, yeah, which yeah, was yeah. really sick as well. So it's quite yeah, nice. Mate. It's like. All comes around, then it like you can do yeah. others, and then people do it for you. But are you, you could cool. make to them as well because they're yeah, really cool. man. But I taught, I taught, I, I supported them in Coventry at the end of 2019, and then like we had a really sick time, like we just all clicked. Um, and so yeah, I was, I was, I'd always wanted someone to do a remix of the of the single, mm-hmm. and then we'd obviously been chatting since that gig and stuff, and and got closer and that, and that's so I was like, do you want to do it? And they were like we've fucking got nothing else to do as well so yeah, yeah we'll do it why not why not and then yeah mate it's shit I love I love it yeah I love what they did with it um, yeah and then yeah managed to managed to get down to Brighton in like the month of normality near normality that we had <laughs> yeah in, uh, in like August and yeah linked up again and yeah it's cool man it's nice it's nice to be able to have that creative outlet with other people yeah it's nice it's nice when you find people that you work with so well but what um what are your gigs like? So I was thinking about this because it's quite a um interesting genre to like put onto a live stage because it's yeah, quite yeah. a chilled out vibe. So what uh-huh. what sort of response do you get live? It's weird, like support gigs. It depends who I'm supporting. I've done gigs where I'm supporting like completely the wrong acts for what mm. I'm doing, and it's like, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, why, am I, why am I in front of these people? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, we're just looking at each other like I don't know, mate. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, I am sorry, exactly the same as you. Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But like, you just just all part and parcel and his experience. Like, I, yeah. I I started playing live really late, so like I've only I've only done like eight gigs or whatever. Um, so but like my headline gigs are a different breed. Like I kind of I play a lot of I like got a lot of upbeat stuff that isn't released yet, right. and so I play I play that and it goes off. To be fair, like it's mm. it's decent. It's just harder when you're support act because. They I've been I've you. been in the crowd I've been in the crowd as seeing watching the support acts and they've been like trying to get the crowd going and I'm just like you're you look like a dickhead mate I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're trying but yeah come on, it's but not so worse. like consciously I'm like I can't I can't be too over the top because I'm just gonna come across like a prick so like the support ones are more mellow because people are taking me in and it's mm. not my people watching me so like they they're taking me in. like people. The majority of people do like do listen and take me in. It's always been a good response, thankfully. Mm. Um, but yeah, the headline the headline gigs are a lot more rowdy because it's my people in it. And uh, yeah, for sure. You know, hyping it up and that. Um, 
Yeah, mate, that's fucking nostalgic. Like, it's been nearly a year since I played live. Mad, it's peak, it? mate. It's terrifying. Mad. Yeah, because yeah, wasn't it? It was, was it Sunflower Lounge you did? Yeah, I did. I think it was sunny uh, on like the 11th of January, it was my last one in Birmingham. Wow. And then I did one in Bristol at the end of February. Sick. And that was the last gig. Yeah. Wow. Madness yeah, that, isn't it? Man? That is I don't, I'm going to forget what I'm doing. I haven't really, pra- <laughs> really practiced that much. So I'm trying to sort of practice a bit more now. In the hope that by summer maybe, but yeah, it's, it's yeah, you've got a lot of words to remember, haven't you? It's not yeah, exactly. my fucking hell, mate. Honestly, <laughs> I was, my first gig, I was so nervous because like <laughs> with a band, if you're the front man and you forget the words, it's calm because there's other people around you. You can just sort of mumble into the mic. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I have to be so clear and spoken and like, mate. I've only, I, don't, I haven't actually forgotten the words once yet. Touch That's wood. That's impressive. That is so, impressive. Yeah, I'll touch the wood it, for you. It'll happen, mate. It'll happen. Jesus. It'll happen. Probably the first gig back of me, like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you stand there and you just stood there, like, yeah. Uh, uh, I'll spray to the chorus, shall we, guys? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've got stories for the 01905, but I yeah. can't fucking remember them. So. <laughs> just like, I have to just hype it up and sort of like, yeah, this is yeah, yeah. That's it. You'll have to just make it up on the spot. Right? Yeah, be my own hype it. man for like. Uh, for five, <laughs> me. Um, but yeah, that's jokes. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. The first the first gigs back. Yeah, yeah. sure. Have you got any that's in the works of that are looking like they're gonna come to fruition or? Well, I had I had um, a Birmingham and a Manchester headline. Um, for May. Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah, I did see that. Um. But the promoter for the promo message me the other day was like, you know, what we're going to do is it, is it looking likely? So we're sort of looking at maybe postponing them again. Um, yeah. I mean, they were meant to be like the fucking EP launch shows and they're going to end up being launch shows for the next EP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I might, if, if, if like come April is, we're looking not likely, I'll just bin them off and, and oh, I can do so it again. Strange. But yeah, I've got, there's actually, there's one in March, a socially distanced one as well, apparently, but. Go ahead, who knows? Mm. Well, if we're uh, out of this yeah. lockdown, then hopefully that will. Is that in Birmingham, way? Right? Yeah, it's supporting this band called Spilt Milk Society from Birmingham. Um, That's it's, a sick name. Yeah, mm. they're quite good. They're quite good. Um, good mates of mine. So hopefully, like obviously, a lot of a lot of the venues in Birmingham were doing the socially distance gigs when it was allowed. Mm. So if we get to that stage, we'll do it, and it'll, it'll be cool. But who knows, mate? Who knows? Who It'll be knows? very weird. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. Well, I, I've I, I can see you working. I was looking at you, and you were writing something down, which scares the shit out of me. But look at his smile. <laughs> I don't like this. Look at his smile. He's got oh, something. I don't know what he's going to ask you. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, the last episode that we did, I did a section where I asked a load of scenario-based questions. Okay. And you had, and the the artists that we were with had to pick from the rest of their band who they'd have help in this scenario. Okay. I've written down four people that you've worked with. Okay. Ozzy, Crowey, Charlotte Lennon, and Danny Murden. Okay. <laughs> right? So I'm going to give you some scenarios. Okay. And I want you to tell me who out of that them four yeah. would you have help you out in this scenario? Fucking hell. Okay. Okay. This could end badly, couldn't it? This yeah, it has yeah. potential. <laughs> <laughs> and I've come up with the ideas while we've been talking. Oh, okay. I can nice. see you writing stuff down. I Straight off the bat. Doing? Yeah. <laughs> so this is because I, I wanted to do it for this, but I couldn't figure out the best way to do it. And then when you were saying about that you'd worked with quite a few people collectively, I was like, shit, yes, you this have. Is it. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is this is my way in. Okay. So have you seen the game Rust at all or any of the games like that that have come out recently? Can't say I have no. Okay, so it's a you little bit. Uh, it's a little bit like my. It's a little bit like Minecraft sort of thing, yeah, yeah. where you kind okay. of get. A, you're in a world that's completely brand new. It's all been wiped, and you've got to start from scratch from the beginning. Okay. okay. You've managed to build your house. You've managed to build a base with these people. Mm-hmm. You have to go out and fetch some form of transportation. Right. Now, this is most likely going to be a horse. Okay. Who are you taking with you to catch and tame this horse to bring it back to the house? Right, it's definitely not Spencer Crowey because he's too laid back and smokes too much weed to be able to <laughs> function with that shit. So I'll have to rule him out straight off the bat. Uh, probably Ozzy because he's the oldest and he's got 
more life experience. <laughs> so he'd be, able to, he'd be able to help me, like, maybe he's been with a few horses in the past, like, going up or something, I don't know. Like, maybe. But he's, he's, he's that bit older, so he'd have, that more, he'd have more experience of life yeah. to be able to, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Aussie on that one. Aussie on that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. good. Okay. Cool. Right, the next one. The, ne- <laughs> the next one. Uh, Joe's, uh, Joe's, I can tell when Joe's, Joe's scared, man. Joe's, Joe's shook. Going. Like, you think you're scared. Joe's shook because he has no idea what's coming out of my mouth. <laughs> Mate, He's not been vetted. Terrifying, man. Normally we plan things. Go on. Good. I like this. Go on. <laughs> right. So, you've been rang-, rang up by a very close friend of yours. Right. They've said to you on the phone, they're like, look, I'm really short of money. Yeah. I need you to steal my car and make an insurance job of it. Okay. Send it in a field, set it on fire, you know, make sure yeah, yeah, no yeah. one knows it's you that's done it and make sure no one knows that I've rung you. Okay. You have one person to help you with this task. Yeah. Who are you taking? <laughs> it's between, it's going to be between Danny and Spencer, I think. I think, I think I'm going to go with Spencer because I feel like that's something he'd probably do anyway. <laughs> Maybe. Just nicking cars. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I'm going to go with Spencer on that one. I feel like we make a good team of doing that. <laughs> I'm, like not, I'm not sure if that was a confidence to him or not. <laughs> no, I don't know. I was trying to say that he might, like, he might kill me it. after this or he might be like, oh, it's safe, yeah. I'd be, be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers, mate. This, so you've been locked up. For crimes you can't, we can't get into. We don't okay. want to. We don't. We don't want to say anything yeah, about this. Sticky situation. It's a couple of sticky situations you found yourself in. You've managed to find a friend inside prison, yeah. And they've helped you dig a hole and find an escape. Okay. You need somebody to come and pick you up and take you to safety. Okay. And help hide and abed you. Okay. Your reliability. That. Okay. Who are you taking? <laughs> Again, Spencer's ruled out because this is too much. <laughs> it, it just be at home watching TV. Yeah, yeah. Like, Fuck. It'd be late. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It it, 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 that wouldn't the plan would come together. I, I think it's between Danny or Ozzy, and I might, I might have to go Ozzy because I think it's a life experience, man. <laughs> He's probably he might have done that when he was like eighteen and helped me or something. Yeah. Although I probably trust Danny more. I don't know. Can I take them both? Like, uh, no, no. That's a full car. Do you want that, that many people car. involved? Too risky. That is too risky, I mean. actually. I'm going to go I'm going to go Aussie. I'm going to go Aussie. Aussie. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, Aussie's like, the most I'd... reliable out of all, of all of the guys. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> I definitely would not have you, El. You'd be so far at <laughs> the bottom of my list. What? Well, for any of them? Uh-huh. For any of the questions or that most recent one? Uh, the most recent one. I was gonna say because I'd definitely be able to pick you up a horse, all right. Yeah, I'd <laughs> I could do that type of shit. And they're the setting the fire to the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah you'd be the first. Good, you'd be the first two, but not the third one. <laughs> oh, that's sad. <laughs> He's <laughs> going. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, no. To be somewhere at exactly the specific minute you need them to be there. Yeah, you are yeah, right. True. Yeah, it would not be you. Yeah, no, it wouldn't. I'd definitely be late. One hundred percent. Well, yeah, that's that. That's that little go. section. I like that. I like that. I like that. Was good. <laughs> well, bring it's... something new to it. <laughs> Did you make all them up, or are you finding these on a website? I know. You I actually made. made them... I actually made these all up on the spot. Yeah. Oh. That's quite impressive. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. that's quite, you're bigging him up too much this episode. Quite, that's oh, quite, yeah. yeah. Good questions, good good ones there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Very well, Al. Good performance today. Thank you. Uh, I like it. Uh, yeah. you. Thank you. Man thank of the thank match, you. man of the match. Yeah, he yeah. has been. He has been today. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I think we get on to our last section now, which we normally do every week. Mm-hmm. And we normally have a section where the person that we're interviewing and us as well, we kind of speak about bands that we are, bands or artists that we're listening to at the minute that need a little bit more recognition in the scene of. Okay. So what 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 have you been listening to at the moment? Who have you been enjoying the most? Um, so like in terms of up and coming sort of stuff, um, there's a lot of stuff from Birmingham, obviously that's sort of bubbling up that I like. Um, there's this band called Eleven Fifty Seven who like no no one's really heard of at the minute because they're, they're sort of 
had a year, 2019 was their year where they sort of got off the ground and then obviously they haven't really done anything the last year. Mm. Um, but like, he's a mate of mine and he sent me kind of some of his demos and some of the final recordings of singles and stuff. And like, if they get around to dropping that stuff, it's going to be, it's going to be really good. Really, really good. It's like a lot of indie now, like bands, I'm quite, it's got to be, they've got to be, like, have something different about them mm-hmm. for me to sort of enjoy. And like, they've, they've got that and it's clean and it's polished and it's, 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 it's good. Um, and then there's this band called Sugar Thief from Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Um, it was sort of, they started off as like, when they were like 16, they were like, quite indie you know sort of the generic indie but now they've kind of just dived into this 70s prog rock sort of cool. style and like they're just I immersed. think I've heard is did they have a song called Joy? Yeah Joy Affair Joy Affair you'd, Joy have, Affair. you'd have heard it yeah that's yeah, yeah. the one I've heard that song yeah yeah and like, that's a tune isn't it yeah yeah um and like yeah but they they've kind of just completely dived into this into this hole oh, and it's cool it's good because I think the best Musicians, um, the ones who just immerse themselves completely in like what they're doing in their sound. So yeah, those are the two sort of at the minute. And there's this there's this rapper called Kofi Stone from Birmingham as well, who's cool. uh, who's good man. He's sort of like up and coming in that kind of Lord Carner scene. Mm, nice. And so yeah, three. Those are the, those are the three. And uh, mm. one more, one more. Sorry, Go on. Lady Lady Sanity from Birmingham as well. Who's okay. Uh, She's yeah, she's good. She's good. Yeah, cool. they're, my, they're my top four sort of at the minute who I'm sort of listening to quite a bit and and trying to push push out there because they yeah, like you say, they deserve the recognition. I like it. Yeah, my right, Joe, have you got anything for us? Um, I was just thinking, I've got a couple recently. I actually only the other day listened to Hotel Lux and they've got oh, yeah. they've got quite a few listeners, but I hadn't heard of them and they're really, really fucking good. Um, mm. And I put them to the track of the day, and they're like they're in that sort of realm of like um, sports team and feet yeah, yeah, yeah. and courting yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, and yeah, that yeah. sort of like I, I have no idea how to describe that. Music. It's like edgy, <laughs> edgy <laughs> punk, isn't it? It's yeah. not it's not as shouty, but it's but a it's bit like, more indie rocky sort of vibe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they're in that sort of realm, but they're really, really fucking good. Um, I've heard about them for so long, and yeah. I haven't actually got around to listening. I probably should they're, as well. They're sick. Their EP they released last year, mm-hmm. which was called... I've gone ballsy now. I'm looking at that. Barstool Preaching. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's really... I like... Listen, they like popped up as recommended. I listened to it. And I was like, fuck, these are like really like high quality. Mm-hmm. Um, a bit like Courting, where like they're, they're still relatively unknown but the, the quality of what they're doing is sick so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. hotel looks i want to check out mm-hmm. nice <laughs> lovely i've got i've got a cheeky one which is probably pretty similar um it's very it's very much like a bit like a shame a bit like a feat um more the punkier end of that spectrum and it's the clock works mm. okay i played them on the radio this week i might have even played them on last week um and it's enough is never enough is their most recent track that I'm loving that's very it's not very shouty it's similar spoken word but with a lot of um behind them. yeah 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 I get a lot it. of aggression over this really quite heavy sort of indie rock beat it's really <laughs> sick mm-hmm. so nice. yeah the clockworks are superb at the minute and I think they've got a real potential to kind of take off a little piece yeah, nice. definitely. they are yeah. they are really good to be fair also the one song that keeps coming on our playlist that is good is that new Gallus tune I don't, oh. know, I don't know if we've spoken about it properly yet, but that new uh, song by Gallus is really, really fucking good. I'd have to, uh, I'd have to check it out. Definitely, yeah. Gallus. Oh, sick Gallus one. is Gallus have been they're they're ones to really, really watch. Mm, okay. The way, nice. especially because like idols and people like that are getting so much, so many yeah, waves, making so many waves. Mm-hmm. They're in that sort of realm, and it's oh. Yes, yeah, Gallus are a band that yeah. need to be on this podcast. So if you're listening, <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> on the DM. Is the mic working? Then <laughs> <laughs> here we'll uh, remix one of your songs for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll interview you. Perfect, mate. <laughs> nice. Well, Beautiful. Ben, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Nah, thank you guys for it. It's been sick to probably meet you. Well, virtually meet you. And, yeah. Uh, and have a good chat, man. No, it's been it's been great. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. It's about time. And as soon as you get going again, we'll be we'll be up seeing you live, I'm sure. Definitely, mate. Hopefully, yeah. Come to uh, I'll come to Northampton as well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> we've got we've got a few, 
Yeah, definitely. We'll get you this end. We'll <laughs> yeah, find yeah, we'll yeah, find yeah. a way. We'll find something. <laughs> we'll get it working. Definitely. Nice. Nice. 100%. But it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. And if you haven't checked out his new EP, then please go and check it out. And you released spin. your demos, was it a couple Yesterday. of days ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So make sure you get over to them, check them out, because he's doing something really unique at the minute. And it's <laughs> something which I think is, I really do genuinely think it's a new wave of music that people aren't clocked onto just yet. Mm-hmm. And when they do, they're it's going to be known for sure. Nice. So thank you very much for coming on. Thank and you for having me. Hopefully when it all goes back to normal, we can grab a pint and do this type of shit properly. Yeah, man. In person. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Absolutely. Nice one. So nice if you've one. got... Cheers, boys. Anytime, Cheers, mate. mate. Thank you very much. If you've got this far in the recording, then make sure you like and subscribe. Um, do all the shit on Apple Podcasts. Reviews and that, please. For fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm going to write you a script. <laughs> <laughs> Reviews and that, please. Um, we need them. They're cool. Especially because it's a new season. Uh, we're really pushing to get back into the new and noteworthy podcast. So if you don't follow us on social media, at the SR Podcast, and we'll see you all on the other side. Peace. Cheers. Sweet.